What up, what up, what up, y'all? This is Astro Dim here talking about the Lion's Gate in general, giving you guys an idea of the superpowers that are connected with the Lion's Gate. What does it mean? And what does it mean to us this year? And what does it mean to you personally? Okay, so let's check things out. What is ah! <laughs> Sorry, mic issues. <laughs> Sorry. Um, first of all, guys, this is um, ex- okay. Um, you know what? In the end, I'm gonna talk about how this is personally affecting me. Okay, okay, we'll do that. All right. So, the Lion's Gate is when a portal opens that helps activate um, some DNA awakening. Kind of activates a superpower. And the interesting thing is usually what happens is it's aligned with the um, blood moon eclipse, right? So the blood moon eclipse happened just on the 27th, right? Um, Which is interesting because Mercury retrograde started the 26th. So that's some deep stuff that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Um, And then it ends like a little couple of days after the Lion's Gate, usually uh, August 12th. Um, so we have basically around like two weeks of kind of getting all of this information and the closer to the lion's gate we are, the stronger the energy is and possibly the more exhausting it is, especially with this past eclipse. It was about what, two hours, how long, how, how long was this last eclipse? This last eclipse lasted like two hours, I think, which is like super duper long for an eclipse. So we get that plus the blood moon eclipse was very close to um, Lion's Gate. And so we have all this information like being packed into us all at once. The last eclipse was similar um, last year. And the year before that, it was in Leo again, I think. And it was super exhausting then too. So, you know, uh, us having this um, Leo Aquarius um, eclipse sessions these past few years, you know, the, the, the lion's gate was even stronger and stronger, okay? Because the window of time between the blood moon eclipse and lion's gate was shortened. And we have to really focus on the Leo energy within our chart. And I'll get into that a little bit later. But basically, um, the lion gates happen around this time every eight, eight year. You know what I mean? Every August 8th. And they really focus on 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. to your time. If you want to be real universal, universal, you use the probably universal time. Um, but it happens every Leo season on August 8th, right? And what happens is Sirius kind of aligns with Earth and um, the galactic center, okay? Now, Sirius is supposed to be really, really connected to us um, when it comes to um, higher learning, advanced ascension, and that type of information. Um, there's known that the uh, Egyptians and the Dogon tribe was very connected with Sirius. Actually, the Dogon tribe, which is the old, one of the oldest tribes ever that has the oldest history ever. These people are extremely wise, knew a lot, taught a lot, taught a lot of the, you know, beyond the continent of Africa, but the Europeans. Um, a lot about our si- the sciences and the earths and they're really really into alchemy and stuff like that like they say that they're from Sirius and the, you know the Sirius A and Sirius B they knew about the second Sirius Sirius B before any like you know before anybody and it's not even visible to the naked eye um, so it's really really interesting they um, you know the doggone tribe and the Egyptians were aware of this and so it's funny because one of the great I think it's the great pyramid or one of the pyramids um, it lines up with the um, earth aligning with Sirius in the galactic center it's wild as fuck um, the sun is also involved in there too um, but a lot of people say it's like when Sirius uh, kind of moves closer to the earth and aligns with Orion's belt and the pyramids in Egypt and it creates a portal and it's just like a whole mass of information is 
um, shot down to us and it activates us. Now, the thing is, is that, you know, there's a lot of secrets within the Egyptian world and all of that, right? And they were so advanced and knew how to do stuff and knew about different things, both scientific, spiritual, and all of that, that we haven't opened up yet. And, you know, they, again, they were able to build the pyramids, which besides the um, Aboriginal Americans, no one else was really doing like that. Um, And people still don't understand how they were able to do it. Um, There's still a whole bunch of secrets within the Egyptian world. And it's definitely a lot of people, including myself, agree that Sirius and the Lionsgate was greatly connected with that. Okay. So again, the Lionsgate portal is when our sun, Sirius and Earth and the galactic center align on 888. And it's an intense surge of energy that just opens up into the uh, Earth it creates a portal, it creates a shift, and it awakens our DNA. And every single year, it um, makes us even um, ascend even more, make us smarter, like make us even more smarter, um, create um, high vibrations, and it creates uh, an awakening within us every single year, little by little, okay? Um, so what is usually suggested is that we usually meditate during this time uh, specifically in your time zone um i think time zones are, are important but you know if you kind of want to be universal maybe maybe doing in um, utc time um and what is good is that you know you kind of have to see what energies that you're taking in um because basically this portal is opening and it's supposed we're supposed to be getting bringing in information right um, is transmitting high vibration frequencies over to us. So be sure to have some time to meditate. Um, I think that will be the most important thing to do. Don't really do intentions. Don't really um, um, do anything similar to that. I mean, you can, and I'll kind of get into that a little bit more, but I think this is a time for us to actually be quiet, be still, Be introspective and take in the information that we are getting while this portal is opening, okay? Um, And so because of this portal, you know, the veil is actually disappearing around this time, right? And it's been disappearing for a while. It's probably why you've been seeing a lot of shit, you know? I know I've been seeing shit that a lot of people haven't been seeing. Like, I've been seeing spiritual shit straight up. And the synchronicities has been wild. The closer to the Lionsgate, the more intense it's been, it has been. And honestly, it's really started since this last, um, but a little bit before this, um, the first eclipse that happened in Kansas season. So um, again, it's, this, is this, this is the angels trying to warn you, uh, not warn you as in scary, warn you, but it's trying to tell you like, hey, get this information, get this, these divine messages, understand these symbols. If you need us, we'll help try to clarify with you. Open your eyes a little bit more. Please, please, please. Okay. Um, and again, with this eclipse happening um, in Leo, Um, the solar eclipse this is the last leo solar eclipse for a while because remember the eclipse are focused on the nodes and north node is getting out of leo pretty soon y'all this is the last leo solar eclipse for a while in about a few in some years okay (laughs) so this is showing the close of leo of the leo aquarius um, eclipses the last like the final end of the eclipse is i believe january 21st 2019 when there will be a um i believe a lunar eclipse in aquarius and then that will be it that will be the end of the you know leo in aquarius eclipse energy right and so with all that being said like you know that's why the energy seems so intense that's probably why you're tired or maybe you're feeling sick you are really drawing out all the negative energy that is connected to leo and you're bringing in all the new energy that you need that is connected with leo okay um you know the lion's gate is especially strong these past few years because of this leo um aquarius 
bipolar eclipse that's been happening, okay, um, for the past few years. So it's really, really important to see where Leo is in your chart to see how this is affecting you, okay? And I'll go by each of the houses and explain all of that information, but um, I actually wrote some notes. I really wanted to talk a little bit more about this. Hold on one second. So actually, I talked about what Sirius is, right? Sirius is like uh, very important to the um, high, highly intelligent civilizations um, within um, the universe, especially for, um, you know, black people, um, people of um, black or African des descent. Um, but it's, you know, of course, it could be shared amongst everybody because, you know, the Egyptians and the doggone tribe shared that information with folks, no matter what color they were. So, you know, it's going to be helpful for everyone, but it had a, is really holds deep into the hearts of people of black descent. Okay. Um, but with galactic center, I don't know if you guys know what the galactic center is, but it's in literally in the middle of the Milky way, um, that people see this as a black hole, but it's the very, very middle of the Milky way. Um, it's fixed of course. Um, and it's in Sagittarius and, you know, Sagittarius is known about philosophical beliefs and all this stuff. So people think this is where God is or where all the universe's information is the beginning and the end of the universe or even a portal. So if Sirius and the galactic center are connecting with the Orion's belt and earth and the, um, pyramids of all these things are connecting somehow and a light is kind of beaming through. Hello, you know what I mean? This is prime knowledge and prime awakening energy that we need to take in, guys. Very, very important, okay? Uh, some DNA awakening, some soul awakening, some soul ascensioning, ascensioning, <laughs> ascension is happening here, okay? Um, so what else do I wanted to say? Oh, and before I actually talk about... Um, you know, some of the, uh, first of all, excuse me for the background noise. I can't control what's happening right now. <laughs> the background noise, I'm sorry. But uh, before I kind of go through like, you know, what you need to really focus on and how the lion's gate with these specific eclipses are like, you know, what this personally means to you. I really um, would like to talk about like, the sky today what's going on how this may affect us directly or as a universal consciousness and how the universal unconsciousness is connected to this too okay so with all that being said right um you know Sirius is always is fixed is always in cancer and um you know the last um, eclipse in Cancer was actually um, conjunct. I'm pretty sure it was conjunct in Sirius too. Um, let me double check that though while it, you know, while I'm talking. But yep, I'm pretty sure it was conjunct in Sirius. I'm gonna just do a quick check while I got y'all here. Um, yeah, and it was. It was. Um, I believe the last eclipse was around 12 to or was it so guys i'm so sorry i should have known i should have like had this information already that'd probably be smart right <laughs> but it was um around serious let's just say that okay um actually let me double check again because i don't want to i hate just leaving people hanging like that i'm sorry y'all um yeah it, i would say so because um the reason why I would, because the last eclipse was um, on the 12th of July, and that's around 20 degrees, and Sirius is usually like 13, 14 degrees. I give the luminaries 10 degrees for conjunctions. So yeah, I would say that it's conjuncting. So, um, you know, it kind of awakened something there. Like that, I, you know, a lot of people say the um, Lionsgate starts with the blood moon eclipse which happened july 27th but i would even go as far and say that because we're kind of going through 
this whole serious connection with the lion's gate and the eclipse was around there that there might have been like a prefix that started actually with the first eclipse that we had on the on july 12th you know what i mean so um that definitely could be a thing for sure just my opinion you know that's what i feel okay but let's look at today see what's how what's what's popping today okay some interesting points that i'm seeing is that it's zero degrees um mars is in zero degrees aquarius right and so this is kind of showing you know again aquarius is connected with this whole lion's gate thing because it's opposite of it um and like it's kind of showing <laughs> It's kind of showing how our drive and um, ambition is connected to it because, yes, Mars is retrograde, but Mars is not going to hit Capricorn, didn't want to hit Capricorn yet uh, until it was the Lion's Gate has finished, right? Usually people say the Lion's Gate finished after August 12th. If you go to August 13th, right, that's when Mars is hitting Capricorn. Isn't that quite interesting? So Mars wanted to, you know, get some of that Aquarius energy or Aquarius wanted to have some of that Mars energy before the Lion's Gate ended. So I think that's not a coincidence, y'all. That's very interesting. Uh, when we think of Mars and Aquarius, though, we think of um, energy being, um, when it comes to your like drive and when it comes to your ambition, um, a lot of people with Aquarius energy, they, um, they, they, how their ambition works is that they think of all these different ideas, right? But it's actually a focused idea because we're talking about fixed energy here. So say they focus on one specific idea and think of all different ways on how to go about it. And sometimes they do get stuck in their mind and don't take the action. Um, they spend definitely more time thinking about different approaches before taking the action. And it may take them a while to take that action, but that's usually how Aquarius energy works. So kind of see, kind of take in that information, see where Aquarius is in your chart and see how that may apply to you. Okay. Um, another thing that I peeped is that, um, you know, Sun is 16 degrees Leo. Mercury is 16 degrees Leo going retrograde. So um, that energy is quite interesting too. It's kind of showing that, you know, you, you know, the sun's involved with this whole lion gate, of course, because it's in Leo season. And the thing is, is that it's kind of showing that we are thinking, especially with Mercury being retrograde, we are thinking and even communicating um, and this is different type, forms of communicating. It may not be actually talking and actually writing. It could be telepathic communication too. That's why it's very important for you to meditate. But we are thinking and communicating um, what our identity is, not only on earth, but how we fit into the galaxy, to the universe in general. Um, so, you know, the, this DNA awakening is not like literal. I mean, it is like could be literal DNA strengthening, but it comes from the mind. You know what I mean? We, it, you know, all this kind of uh, DNA construction starts with the mind and then it kind of figures it out. You know what I mean? So Mercury, of course, represented by the mind. So it's time for us to definitely reflect on um, how we communicate, how we think. Uh, it is time it's kind of not only repairing our DNA but repairing our mind so we can repair our DNA and we can strengthen it and so th the best way to do that is to reflect and be introspective um, when it comes to thinking and communicating i.e. mercury retrograde so um, and then of course our identity and how we react and how we represent ourselves is represented by the sun so that all just blends in together in such a beautiful, nice fashion, don't you think? <laughs> um, so that's really cool there. Um, and what else I wanted to talk about, y'all? Um, I, I think that's it. That's the, that kind of like the main things that I peeped. Um, of course, Libra is one degree. Um, excuse me, Venus is one degree. Libra. Um, so it's kind of cute how like Venus wants to be involved somehow. <laughs> um, it's not really involved in the whole aspect of things, but it's, I think it's uh, quite interesting that it's one degree. Um, 
one degree um, Libra, Venus is. So just just something to point out. Um, but yeah, that's all that's all I'm gonna speak on for now. Um, another thing actually I want to mention too is that um, with this energy, uh, m- the moon is uh, moving closer and closer to Sirius too. So it's kind of connecting how um, our emotions are connected to this um, higher frequency, higher vibration of living and thinking and feeling, you know, because our emotions are connected to that. And how our intuition is uh, is trying to heighten, is trying to excel and, and, and get greater. And the thing is, like I said before, because this is showing the, the end for a while of this Leo um, and Aquarius polar eclipses that we've been going through since North Node and South Node is moving out of Leo and Aquarius and moving into Cancer and Capricorn. This is showing this is the end of a, a, a era, kind of like we're moving a step up. We're we're ascending a step up. OK. And so, again, it's the last opportunity to take in this solar eclipse energy pertaining to Leo matters within our chart. So we definitely should be meditating, should be trying to get in the information from the universe, from the angels, from the gods. And while doing this, I suggest you guys to definitely ask for protection. Sage your house, but not only sage your house, because saging takes out all energy. You know what I mean? Um, You know, use some Florida water or some Palo Santo to bring in the good energy too. And ask for protection. Make sure you're good. Make sure you're safe. And then do this meditation, okay? Uh, It's really important because, again, the veil is thin. The veil is disappearing. So some creepy crawlies can come and try to get you too, (laughs) okay? All right. So, you you know, with this eclipse happening in Leo season, um, you know, the lunar eclipse happened within Aquarius in Leo season too. And then... Um, the Lion's Gate is in Leo season. It's the last solar eclipse happening around the Lion's Gate era or whatever. The Lion's Gate, uh, not era, but Lion's Gate um, season, I guess. Um, what we need to do is kind of see, well, first of all, for saying that, you know, Leo is very important right now. The energies of Leo and the energy of Leo is self-expression, talent, creativity, children, fun, dating, um, things that you create, things that you bring up yourself, things that come of you and you give to the world, right? We need to kind of see how this actually uh, implies or applies, excuse me, um, within our chart and what we need to actually take in information um, of specifically, like what information that we need to get from this Lion Gate portal (laughs) that's happening right now okay so if you have leo in the first house the information that you should be trying to focus on while you're meditating is about your personality your persona your appearance and your first impressions and how when people see you what they think of you um holistically not just by your appearance but your personality and your persona okay um, if it's Leo is in your second house, you're looking a little bit deeper and you're focusing more on your self-worth, your self-confidence, how you find yourself worthy, how people find yourself worthy, how it kind of blends together, how you, f- you focus in on people call like how you're focusing on people seeing how worthy you are and how you're actually taking it in, internalizing that. Another thing that the second house represents too is, um, also material worth and how you make money so if you're having some money issues you have leo in the second house or you even if you're not having money issues and you just want to be able to focus a little bit more on the financial side definitely meditate on that you will get some high prime bomb info okay definitely do that all right third house third house is about um, communication um thinking um, and all types of communication too. Like I said before, this could be telepathic communication. This could be prayer. This can be writing. This could be talking. Could be whatever. 
whatever type of communication. Third house also represents community. So if you want to strengthen your community, whatever type of community you're in, it doesn't have to be like location. It could be the community of your ethnicity, community of your race, community of your age group, whatever. It represents community in general and self-realization. Gemini is all big about finding self and self-realization. And, you know, of course it is because it's thought processes and talking and, and kind of um, it's, it's mutable air. So it's kind of going to different places, trying to logically see how it fits them and fits their selves. You know what I mean? So, again, Leo in the third house, focus on that. All right. If Leo's in your fourth house, what you need to focus on is on family, um, your home, your house, not only your immediate family that you were born into, but the immediate family that you bring out into the world. Um, ancestral um, wounds and ancestral healing, definitely, okay? Focus on that. Um, heritage, any type of thing, anything that's to, anything that's connected to your heritage. Sorry, guys. Mercury retrogrades fuck with me all the time. I can't talk clearly <laughs> because my son is conjunct uh, Mercury. So, you know, sorry. But as I, I'm going to keep going. Um, fourth house definitely represents your innermost, deepest emotion and your private moments that you share with only the people that you trust. Um, so that's why your family is included into the fourth house too. So you could definitely get some more information about that, okay? Um, another thing too is um, your fifth house. Fifth house is actually the Leo house. So again, um, you, this is if your Leo is in the fifth house, what you want to focus on is your creativity, how you bring things to the world, um, your talents, the things that you create, your children if you have children, dating you know how your dating life is and how you handle that and just casual sex and stuff like that and how you have fun and how you can break out of fun um and bring fun into you so especially i've been noticing i've been doing a lot of readings for people that have heavy fifth houses like having pluto mars chiron in there um especially if you have a malefic planet or energy in there um there's nothing wrong with that it definitely shows your strength but if you're trying to like break through if you feel like you have a blockage in your fifth house Definitely, 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 if you have Leo, fifth house, definitely meditate today, <laughs> okay? I can't stress that more enough, honey. Definitely do that, okay? I would even say, if you have those planets in the fifth houses, not in Leo, still try to meditate on that and see what you bring. Because again, fifth house is represented by Leo, so that will be a cool thing to do. Sixth house, right? The thing that you want to meditate on and focus on is everyday tasks, routines, um, things that you do in a frequency, even if it's once a year, even if it's twice a year, anything that you do in a frequency that's kind of in a routine, that's in a procedure, in a process. And um, everyday things like going to work every day, going to the post office every month, you know, things like that. If you're finding your life a little bit boring or if you're finding your life a little bit too hectic, this information can definitely help you with that. Um, and even if you want your everyday life to just be more fun in general, you know, um, meditate on that today and see what it can bring you. Um, seventh house is all about relationships, whether romantic or platonic. You will just relate into people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. It's not just any relationships. It's one-on-one -on -one relationships. Definitely not group relationships. Group relationships is more on the 11th house side of things, okay? So what you need to focus on is how you relate to people. Um, you know, a lot of people have been talking about twin flame type of shit here because Leos have a big, big heart <laughs> and it's all about romancing and stuff, okay? Um, so, you know, if you have Leo in the 7th house, um, you can definitely focus on, different, you know, platonic and business relationships, but see, if you're really trying to find more about love, uh, definitely meditate on that, on how you can reach to your twin flame. If you have one, reach your um, soulmate, reach your life partner, and just about love and relationships in general, okay? Um, of course, if, it doesn't have to be romantic if you don't want to, if you don't want it to be, um, but just meditate and see what comes to you, like it's really important for you to see what comes to you because 
Even though you may want to focus on something, the angels and God and the universe may not want you to focus on that thing, okay? So I'm trying to kind of steer you in the right direction based off your chart so you can kind of get somewhere, you know what I mean? And get the most information that um, is helpful for you in your path and, you know, your destiny and shit, right? <laughs> okay. Um, eighth house. Eighth house represents any type of um, form of intimacy, so if you have Leo in the eighth house, you know, you're going to want to focus on intimately bonding with others, emotionally bonding with others, intimacy, death and transformation, because those are intimate moments of someone's life for sure. Very close, important moments of people's lives. Um, shared worth as well, like how you are when it comes to you trusting other people, trusting so much that you are one, such as like marriage in so, you know, how in a marriage you share money and you share a house. You know what I mean? That type of shared worth. Inheritances, settlements, any type of thing that you, sh any type of money you're sharing, right? Because remember, it's opposite Taurus. And Taurus is about you, you kind of being self-made. While, you know, um, Scorpio is about you not being self-made, you sharing the funds, you know? It could be debt too. So if you have some issues with debt, you need to handle and to settle definitely look into that okay um before actually no i'll talk about that later hopefully i remember <laughs> all right ninth house right so ninth house if you have leo here um you need to focus on philosophies beliefs um all of all different kinds religious scientific logical whatever um philosophical beliefs and kind of you taking in different types of um, beliefs and different types of philosophies from all over the world kind of meshing it together and seeing what resonates with you and what fits with you you know what I mean if you want more light and ideas all about that definitely meditate eight o'clock your time or whenever honestly whenever you have the time and because this energy is strong it's gonna last a bit it's just the energy is the strongest today um, I don't know why I said today like that today <laughs> today and, um, you know, just meditate on that. See what you get. You might have a huge Eureka moment, a huge revelation, and it can change your life forever. All right. Tenth house. A good thing to focus on when you meditate and see if the angels give you more answers on this. Reputation, status, career, you know. Even scandal. If you have this big scandal that, you're that you are in, you have Leo in the tenth house, you want to fix it. Focus on that. Okay. Um. If you have some career issues, you want to fix it. If you're trying to figure out what career will best match your destiny and your life path, do that. If you you feel like you deserve more than what you're getting, you, you feel like you need a better status, better reputation, you're trying to figure out what did you did in a past life or early life to, to put you in the position that you're in now, definitely Leo in the 10th house. Focus on that while you're meditating. 11th house. It's just the, the, the company that you keep, your friends, your acquaintances, your colleagues, your co-workers, your non-immediate family members like cousins and aunts and uncles and stuff. Um, and society overall and how you fit in society and how society perceives your actual talents and what you give to the world. Focus on that, you know, focus on those things if you have Leo in the 11th house while you're meditating and God and the angels in the universe will be able to give you the answers that you want about that. All right. Lastly, 12th house. Now, 12th house is interesting. 12th house is all about spirituality. Um, and for folks who are not really spiritual, um, I get it. Like, you know, I'm a spiritual person. So, of course, I'm going to push the whole spirituality thing. But um, if you're not on the spiritual side of things. Um, you know, you can focus on your, how you sabotage yourself, your self undoing and things about that. So if you want to kind of figure that out more, learn more about that or learn of just about the universal unconsciousness, even if you're more in a scientific mind state and you just want to know more about what else is out there beyond earth, right? And how things are, because, you know, most people know there's more of this beyond earth. So even if you want to take the scientific approach, you kind of want to see what's outside of earth and how does it, how do you fit in the whole galaxy of things and all that meditate and focus on that. And even if you 
are spiritual not spiritual try to focus on spirituality and see if it's actually a good fit for you you know what i mean um see if anything pops open because what could happen here is either a person that is not spiritual can turn spiritual if they meditate and they see a certain thing and if they're ready to see that certain thing you get what i'm saying um one thing i do want to mention though for ninth house leo folks um, if you're religious um, or if you want to focus on religion, see how it fits in your life or anyone else's life, definitely focus on that if you're a ninth house in Leo too, okay? Lastly, the thing is, um, again, during the Lion Gate, right, we have Mercury, Sun, and North Node in Leo. So wherever Leo is in whatever house, you know, um, is in your is in your chart. Those are the energies in Leo. Okay. Now, the thing is, like, okay, okay, of course, Mercury is here. Mercury is all about thought process, routine, communication, and things like that. And it's retrograde, so it's again telling us we need to reflect on those things while we're meditating. Okay. So definitely, no matter where Leo is in your chart, kind of put that together with how you talk and communicate and think in your thought process and how you met how you are manifest how you um kind of procedurally do things how your routine is and stuff like that it's all about reflection it's it mercury is not retrograde out of coincidence during this time we need to be reflective okay about about whatever leo is in our chart you know what i mean so if it's in the seventh house we need to be reflective on how we think and communicate in terms of relationships. You know what I'm saying? Um, sun is here. So we're kind of, again, how we communicate and how our identity and how reactions are connected to it. You know what I mean? It's shining bright on Mercury. You know, the sun is shining. It's kind of making making the Mercury bright and, and focusing more on our communication and thoughts and how our identity and how we react to things and how our talent and our creativity and self-expression is included in all of that, okay? And with them both being in 16 degrees, man, that's that means something, y'all, all right? So, again, include that into whatever house Leo is in to get a full picture of um, what you need to meditate on and also, you know, what energies you kind of need to focus on during this time okay and then lastly north node is in leo of course right because this eclipse is about to be in leo the last leo eclipse for a while solar eclipse for a while excuse me so with that being said this is very very important for our life path whatever information that we're getting on the lion's gate is extremely extremely important with our life path okay um we we really need to focus on not just our life path in general and what house leo is in but leo type of things such as self-expression creativity and how our life path fits into that children and having fun and how our life path fits into that dating in our talents and how our life path fits into that okay so don't forget that part y'all please don't please but please 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 don't okay and again with mars zero degrees in aquarius and mars is actually retrograde we shouldn't we, we shouldn't be moving forward on what people how people perceive our talents we already focused on that with the lunar eclipse and how we emotionally connected with how people perceive our talents. What we need to do is focus right now on our talents, on our creations, on our self-expression and how and what that actually means to us. OK. All right. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you like this talk, guys. Um, you know, I talked for freaking almost 40 minutes. Um <laughs> But, you know, I just wanted to kind of share this information. I hope this is helpful for you guys. Um, You know, after this meditation, I think this would be a good time for you to reflect on, you know, on your intentions that you want to focus on um, for the solar eclipse. You know, you already let go of things during the lunar eclipse, or at least you were supposed to, right? Um, We should focus a little bit more on things we want to bring into our lives. 
when it comes to our self-expression, when it comes to our creativity and the, our fun and our life and our talents and things like that, okay? So, um, you know, after this, after you get all this information, and definitely try to log the information so you won't forget. Um, and then try to focus a little bit more on, um, you know, what you want to bring ba back in your life. So when the eclipse comes in a couple of days, you'll be ready to set those intentions and let those intentions go wild, okay? Um, again, I had some people question me, um, not question me, but gave me, like, um, asked me questions on, like, can I let go of things during the Lion Gate? I think this is not a time to let go. I think this is actually a time to receive, okay? So, um... And it makes sense that it's closer to the solar eclipse, you know, during new moons. This is when we ask for things to be, be in our lives, not to let go of stuff, okay? We, you might have to wait until the Virgo full moon, I mean, excuse me, not Virgo, the Pisces full moon later on in Virgo season this month to let go of some stuff, okay? Um, so, with all that being said, um, I wish you guys a happy Lionsgate. I know I'm late, I'm sorry. Um, but even if you can't, do this around eight o'clock definitely try to do some uh, meditation um today see if you can even find um, a way to kind of have like one of those um trusted trusted hypnosis and trusted uh meditation music and sounds and by by neural beats while you sleep if you don't even have the time to reflect and see if it can help you let it be let those um um, sounds be focused on wherever Leo is in your chart and see if it opens up things to you and you can have um, some um, you know have some communica communication with like angels and God and the universe and your protectors and stuff like that okay um, I hope this was helpful y'all one thing I would like to say too um, sun 16 degrees mercury 16 degrees that um, derives to 7 and the moon's in 7 so even though 888 is very, very big, you know, it seems like seven is very big too. Those are three sevens. Three sevens are very important. That's a very, a very, very spiritual and divine number. Okay. So, and I think this actually shows too, um, you know, when I think of seven, I think of the seventh house. Um, I think of not just spirituality, but relationships. So this is kind of like some twin flame shit happening here, probably. Some spiritual unions, some karmic unions. Someone's about to get their bay, that's for sure. Um, but with the eight, with the lion's gate, it's definitely big on transformation. Eight is big about, big on death and rebirth. Transformation, kind of building up, working working hard to kind of get the um, fruits of your labor, transforming your life for the better, all right? So make sure you do that. Um, Lionsgate, for me, this all this energy is happening on my seventh house, right? Um, and yeah, like, I'm run down, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, but I know this is energy that I'm letting go of, like I'm releasing, I'm purging out old energy, bringing in new. And I just had a tough ass couple of weeks. These eclipses fucked my ass up, y'all, okay? It was hitting something on me almost every angle. The, the July, early July eclipse was conjuncting my dark moon Lilith. This July 27th eclipse hit exactly on my ascendant. And this eclipse is on my moon, like not exactly on my moon, but conjuncting my moon. So I'm having a lot of wild energy happen right now, happening right now. And I'm tired. OK, even this lion's gate, this lion gate is 16 degrees. Um, Leo, that's near that's conjunct my moon, too, because you give the moon 10 degrees. It's a luminary. So it's like I'm tired. <laughs> I wasn't even going to do this shit. Honestly, y'all, I'm so fucking tired. You don't even understand. I'm tired. <laughs> And so, um, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just, I don't know. I feel like I really wanted to kind of give you guys this, this stuff for sure. Um, oh, one thing I want to mention real quick too. I don't know if y'all peep, but Chiron and, uh, 
um, Libra is our opposite of each other. I mean, Libra and Venus are opposite of each other. Chiron is in Aries. Libra is in Venus, right? I mean, Venus is in Libra. I always do that with Libra and Venus for some reason. So I feel like one thing I want to mention real quick before um, I end this is that we have to, we're, right now with Chiron, we're reflecting on childhood traumas and um, early life traumas that are connected to, um, you know, people hurting us with, um, in connection to our personality, our persona, and our appearance and how that affected us, right? And we're reflecting on these things and trying to heal from them, right? But it's opposite of um, Venus and Libra. And so once we purge these things, right? It's, I feel like it's showing that once we let go of these things, what's going to happen is uh, we're going to start being a little bit more lighter on relationships. We're healing ourselves. We're healing the past traumas that we have so we can be more loving on the inside and attract the love of our lives from the outside. So as they so, so um, as, as above, so below is as within, so without. You know what I mean? So the people on the outside world, i.e. outside of you, you know, you kind of bring in light in the inside, you radiate and you attract the good people that's supposed to be in your life. So I feel like this is a good time to heal those wounds that you have. So you can attract the right people that should be in your life because, you know, Venus and Libra, you know, that's um, Taurus is ruled by Venus, but on the side of Venus, when it comes to self-worth and money. Um, but Libra rules Venus when it comes to relationships and relating, you know, both are things that you desire, but, um, Libra's more on desiring relationships and relating with others. Okay. So you want to relate with others better. You want that love of your life, you know, do the Chiron healing when it's connected to how people have hurt you when it comes to your persona, your personality, your appearance and your first impressions. Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, with this, all this energy happening in my seventh house, I know this is telling me that I'm going to meet somebody, (laughs) meet somebody important very, very soon. I know that's what it means. And for me to kind of, this is a TMI thing, but for me to have my period right now too, is quite interesting. I'm getting fertile. (laughs) I feel like this is kind of, this is kind of like showing me something like, listen, like, Things are about to be popping. It's going to be happening fast. You're going to be building families. I really feel like that's what it's telling me. I'm getting really into my womanhood and my motherhood and be, being very empress card. Very major arcana. Okay. <laughs> but all right, y'all. That's it for me. I hope you love this. Let me know if you have any questions. I want to know what you think, how you feel, if this makes sense. Have a little dialogue. Be nice. Don't make make sure you don't don't come on some funny shit, man. I'm telling you, I ain't I don't feel that. You don't want that. You don't want that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've had a rough couple of weeks, nigga. You don't want that. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let me stop. Anyway, that was really loud, so hopefully I didn't hurt your ears. Anywho, I hope you appreciate this, guys. I love you so much and happy Lionsgate. Peace.